Hello guys, this is Goodlike, and this is the series where I try to write an application that looks like the YouTube subbox and does what the YouTube subbox does, but better. For today, the goal is to actually get to the point where you can start coding, but who knows? I also don't want to make this video super long like all the other ones. For starters, let's review the stories we have so far, because as I was editing, I noticed that uh, some of them are slightly inaccurate, like this one. I want to my subscription box to. It, that needs to be improved. At the same time, we can get started on adding acceptance criteria. When I select a playlist, then the list of videos in that playlist are displayed. We're being very vague here because our initial application, once again, will probably be something like a command line application. So selecting a playlist will be something like giving an input parameter to it and list of videos will just be something that we print out as text. So I see a problem with this acceptance criteria immediately. <laughs> Which is good. It assumes the fact that the playlist exists. So we need to add some more things to this. Right, I've added the condition that the playlist must exist. If it doesn't exist on YouTube, then when I select it, however that would be, then I'm given a warning. This makes a lot of sense as well because just because we have information on our side that we have a playlist doesn't mean it still exists. Someone could have deleted it in the time. Another aspect of playlists is whether they are public or private. I think we should also include that here. There we go. One way that we could have done this is of course that regardless of whether it exists or not, we could have just shown an empty playlist. But I want to be as informative as I can really get away with when I'm uh, doing this application, which is why I want to separate all these specific situations. I also want to add this specific condition so that it's more clear what exactly it means to display a video. As a minimum, we want to make sure that we see the title and the link. In the future, we'll probably have a very similar story like this. Maybe even copy-pasted, I don't know. We'll see how this works out, which will uh, be essentially a story to work on the UI side of things. In some sense, what we're doing right now is working on a one portion of a system and later we'll work on another. I do feel that in particular in this case, it is justified not to work on the UI at the same time because of two factors. Factor number one, it should be a pluggable UI. We're designing an application that essentially doesn't really care about the UI that much. And two, I'm just one person, so if I try to touch up everything, uh, my sprints will have to be really, really long. Regardless, we're still working in a way that is vertical, because we will still produce a working piece of application that we can show and someone can use. It's just that it won't be the final version with all the bells and twinkles, which will involve a normal UI. The reason I explain this is because I can imagine how someone could be confused and think that uh, this is all wrong, you're not doing the UI at the same time. But I think that in my case it's fairly justifiable. All right, let's do the next story about the searching of channels. We have two simple cases. We want to, when we search for something, see a bunch of channels. The channels should show the title and link to them. And we want to have some kind of a limiting factor. And we want to have some kind of a default value for our preferred amount of results. I pick 13. We could pretty much have the same thing added here, but because playlists aren't necessarily something I want to support from the very beginning, We'll actually move this story down and uh, deal with it much later down the line. All right, so this story is about seeing information on a video. The acceptance criteria is very similar to what we have with video playlists, but in this case, since the uh, specifics of what the information is would be, as you can see, very long, I opted to put it in the comments instead of putting in the acceptance criteria. I don't think it's a big deal as long as everyone understands what 
does it mean? Uh, importing subscriptions, once again, is not very important at the moment. It's more important than playlists, though. That'll, that'll much I'll give you. Hide videos, that's also not as important as importing subscriptions, I would say. See more and more videos as I scroll down. No, this one is... Less important than importing subscriptions, probably. Important subscription is pretty important. <laughs> Refresh my subscription box. Uh, uh, also, that that's probably very important. The containment of recent videos not that important. I would say that this is probably the least important one because it's just an automatic thing. We do want to rewrite it a little bit. I want to automatically see in my subscription box videos that have been relatively recently released. So I can avoid constant manual refreshing. It's a little bit hard and it's all the fault of this too. <laughs> they had to put it in there just to mess with my grammar. Marking videos as hidden and watched is relatively important. Keep persistent marks on videos. That's probably more important than actually marking them because <laughs> you we will automatically mark videos as watched as you just click on them but you won't always have to do that i want to keep my subscription box settings again pretty important i, w I would go as far as to say that that's more important than importing subscriptions because wh who cares and I want to choose which playlists appear in my subscription box so that is less important than importing subscriptions but more important than keeping persistent marks. Refreshing subscription box, is that really that important? You can just turn the application on and off again. <laughs> it's it's pretty annoying, but it's not important as having all these other things. Like, you, like turning something on and off isn't as annoying if uh, it keeps all the stuff and uh, you can already import stuff. So I would say this is less important than all of the persistence up to here. So there we go. We're already also doing prioritization estimations. In in theory, I should have to estimate first so that, you know, I could look at any of these stories and say, well, this story is super tiny. So even though it's not very important, let's just put it up there. But in this case, I know that all of these are more or less just not important right now because our focus for our first sprint is to get something off the ground. These are the most important because in some sense they define the backbone of our application and I would say the f this is the most important one followed by this followed by this. So in in a sense if if our application doesn't allow you to search for channels in order to subscribe to something you will absolutely have to import subscriptions. Which is not my goal. I want to be able to not import my subscriptions at all. If I don't want to, I could just make a whole different subscription box. You could have multiple subscription boxes in one application. One for your channel that would just maybe even keep automatically up to date through some method. And others that are different somehow. For example, they could contain channels that you don't really want to watch all the time. But when you're really bored, that's where you'll go. While a lot of this could be achieved with filtering, I feel like the filtering would become far too complicated at that point to actually be uh, viable. It would be a much better idea to have these kind of configurations and then you see the subscription of that, subscription of that, subscription of that. So in some sense, being able to search for channels is really important because that will allow you to actually find something to import into the application. Otherwise, you would have to do something crazy like this. Uh, search here. Let's say, I don't fucking know, what's a popular channel? PewDiePie? I'm not subscribed to him, so there would be a perfect example. You would have to go here. But that wouldn't be enough, because this gives you, if you watch at the bottom left corner, this link, I guess we can just copy link location and you can see it here. But this usually isn't good enough. And even here, we can't actually see the idea at all. So regardless, I wouldn't have to be able to find the ID based on this, this particular input and so on and so forth. And it's, it's just not that simple. Basically, this will save you a lot of trouble. 
the fact that you will just be able to search for shit in the application. This is also important because even if you find something, you can never be sure un unless you look into the playlist and then you're sure that you want this playlist in your subscription box. And finally, seeing information about a video is about as basic as it gets. If the whole subscription box ultimately will be just a bunch of videos and informations about it. So these are like three really backbone important things without which this application simply wouldn't make sense. All right, so we have a prioritized backlog. We've written some acceptance criteria and stuff for pretty much the stories that we really want to do. Uh, I could go and write it for all of these stories, but I think that would be really wasted effort right now. More than likely, those are the ones that we're going to take into the sprint. But before we do that, we should really do some estimations. Very often, it's really hard to understand what is it you're estimating, why you're estimating it, and so on and so forth. In general, you will be given advice such as this. Estimate not the time you think it will take, but rather the amount of effort you'll have to put in. So maybe the amount of places you'll have to touch up, things like that. And ultimately, since they are estimations, they don't really matter. They matter even less because they're the very first estimations. Uh, well... In some sense, it does make them matter a lot, because they will set the stage for the rest of the uh, estimations. Because in the future, when you will be estimating something else, like these stories, you will have to look back at these and see, what did those points really mean? But at the same time, it means that there's no real meaning to any of those points. Like if I give one, one, one to all of these stories, assuming I s thought that they take about the same amount of time, or I gave them 10, 10, 10, it would be exactly the same thing. That is what I mean. That you, you don't have to worry too much now. So rather than shitting our britches and stuff, let's just pick one story and give it 10 points. Let's do the one at the top. And this will be our, essentially, starting point. This story is 10 points, whatever that means. I didn't even think about it, because it doesn't matter. It's the very first decision. I give it a really arbitrary large amount of points, because I'd rather have the capacity to scale down when I need to, than to scale up. I think this gives us enough room to breathe, to state that, okay, some story is just one point, it means it's whatever, and uh, doesn't go too crazy with the numbers. So 10 points, I don't know what that even means yet. Now we're going to start comparing. So let's compare these two stories and see which one would take more effort to do. So this story is implementing of search criteria with an optional parameter of amount of results and just displaying very basic information about that these results. This story. Ultimately, it will be very similar. This will be an API call. This will be an API call. Just consume API, consume API. But this will have just that tiny little bit more work in terms of determining whether something is or isn't a uh, public or unlisted or whatever. Right now, we don't care between public and unlisted, which we might care in a future story that would be similar to this one. So let's give it 12 points. It's similar to this story, but it's slightly more, just that slightly more. Now this about a video is once again just another API call. We call up with a specific ID or whatever, and similar to this, we have this. But in this case, we actually have to show a lot more information. Now the question is, does that matter? I think you could say that it matters slightly because I will have to investigate and see like where all this information is, perhaps write more uh, classes or assuming that I don't use the library that Google provides, which is a possibility. So it, it could take a little bit of extra time. So let's put it at 13. Now, the way I imagine this next sprint going is that we will have some sort of controls. It won't be a pure command line application. So we should allow it to work like that because it's trivial, but we should also consider the possibility to do something like search for channels, select them with arrow keys or whatever, and then 
get a playlist, select that playlist, videos in that playlist, get the videos, and then just to be able to, let's say, fetch something from those videos. For example, we could uh, put the link into the clipboard so that you can paste it in afterwards like this into the browser. There we go, we added another acceptance criteria. Given that I have selected a video, when I ask for a link, it launches, it launches. Who, who's it? The application launches the link in my default browser or copies it into the clipboard if it is enabled to launch it for some reason. So, Pretty open criteria, but the idea is clear. If if I have selected the video somehow and I've displayed its information, then I can ask for a link for that video and then it'll launch or just copy it. Doesn't really matter. Right, so when the link is not launched, I'm informed about it, as well as the fact that it was copied to the clipboard. It's 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 written a bit differently, but that's the point. This will add some work, because we'll need to work out the default browser and stuff and then copy and support us. So I think that this will actually involve a substantial extra amount of work. Once again, this could be just a command line. We just enter the command line and uh, we just have special option that says don't just list information, also launch the link in the browser or copy it. So even though I've been Putting the requirements in the terms of select and ask, these requirements still could be interpreted as just one-off calls to a command line application. But they could also be something more. The point is, I don't know right now, and if we can manage to do something more, we'll definitely do it, but even if we just manage to do a command line application with these options, I, I'll be happy. Let's add another five points to this, just just for that. Because this, essentially, it would be like half of what this is extra. So this is an API call with an optional parameter to displays some output. This would be an extra parameter with some functionality and some logic. Right? These numbers really don't matter. They're, they're completely vague and whatever. And I love that they're big. <laughs> it's fine. It's totally fine. We could just divide by two if we want to, but I don't want to. I like this. All right. Wow. Okay. So we actually managed to accomplish quite a bit. Let's do length of sprint and plan. So I kind of decided on the length of sprint to be 16 episodes. Now, why 16 episodes? I'm hoping to keep each of the episodes in terms of time I will spend on them roughly 30 minutes long. If I spend more, it just taxes me greatly and uh, puts me off doing any more for a really long time. Like this, this video is about a week after the last one, and that's because the last one basically took two hours to record. This hopefully it won't take even an hour to record, which is great. So if we have 16 videos of roughly half an hour, that gives us eight hours, which is about one workday. Now, admittedly, this isn't very accurate because in a workday, you would have things like breaks, you would have time to think about what you're doing, whereas in our case, we'll think in between the 30 minute segments. As the day went on, you would progressively get more tired, whereas here it will be just completely random 30-minute segments. Still, it's pretty close to one full day of, like, grinding hardcore work. And I do believe that what we have set out to do now should be, in theory, accomplishable in that time. If it isn't, then we'll definitely increase the sprint length going forward, because this is not much work at all. This is just like a really basic command line application. That's our goal. Can we actually set up a sprint with a go? First time using sprints. Yes. Yes. Use the plus symbol on the left hand. There is this. Oh. Oh. Okay, so let's be generous and give it 30 and expect the team velocity. This sprint apparently is 40 because that's the amount of stories we will take. 
will apparently start tomorrow for some reason. <laughs> Who fucking knows? Wait, these are working days. That's a mistake. Uh, make it 20. Four weeks. All right. I just hope that we can actually, uh, like, stop the sprint early or start a new sprint. I don't know. If we try to add a new sprint, as you can see, it will have a very particular date. So, let's not ruin this. Oh, okay, well, fine. Let's ruin it. I ruined it. Already ruined everything. I should have done this before. <laughs> should have checked this out before. Now we have two sprints, even though we haven't even started the first one. Anyway, where are the the stories with the points? Why are these ordered in the weird, bizarre way? And why is every story say it has zero points when I've clearly given some points to some stories? Okay, so we have to do in progress, completed, accepted. Very nice. That's all we really need. You can move them in and back. Not sure what else we could add. A lot of these are nondescript, and I think that after we're done with these, uh, I will probably end up writing some more similar ones for the UI. Yeah, next video we'll start actually coding something. Uh, we'll probably start in the order that we've subscribed to already, because why not? You know, it, you might as well. <laughs> I'm the only person here anyway. So, I, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad. This, this turned out to be quite swift and simple. So let's do some rambling. First things first, I want to add some development principles to the notes. So things that we did not add here to the notes, which we should, and that is no server and optional login. These are two logic. No, logic is very, very mandatory, but the login is optional. The idea, of course, is that our application should just work as long as YouTube works. And funnily enough, today, was the day when YouTube shut down for a while for some reason, but regardless, regardless, <laughs> doesn't matter. As long as that doesn't happen, our application should just work and do the things that it has to do. Why would it not? Now, logging in is going to be optional. What I mean by that is that the initial versions, and who knows, possibly the only versions, if I don't see any big need for it, will not require you to log into your account or to give rights to this application in any way, shape, or form. We'll go through this more as we're actually doing this stuff, because the problem is that what does it mean, log in? I have to explain it in a technical terms. Suffice to say, you won't need to enter your password or give any rights to the application. It, it should just work from public data. Now, of course, if there is no public data, it can't work, but that's besides the point. That's how I want it to work first, because all my stuff is public, all, all my subscriptions, all, everything. So, in theory, you will be able to, with this application, copy my subscriptions and see what I see on my subscription box. Now, you won't see which videos I've watched, you won't see which videos I've hidden, because obviously all of that will be stored on the application itself, on the thing that you download, so in, you, in your computer or whatever device that we will eventually have this on. And if at some point there will be some interoperability between devices, it will be completely manual or it will use some third-party service. I don't know what that would even be. Eventually, if I see the need, we could actually produce some sort of uh, more interconnective uh, experience between uh, the YouTube subbox on the YouTube and this application. Uh, but not right now. That's like completely out of scope. Completely out of scope. So, just so it's clear. So, why am I doing most of this live? Do I even know? Yes, I actually do know. I just wrote this because it's funny. The idea behind this series was to be a kind of a sort of a... I wouldn't call it a guide. I, I wouldn't call it a tutorial even, though some portions of it will definitely be tutorial-esque. But I wanted to do it live so that it's clear for random people who perhaps haven't had this, this experience as to how it could work. 
This doesn't make much sense probably, but the idea is when you're looking at your usual guides or whatever on the internet, and I think I mentioned this before, they either tackle problems that are not really realistic or applicable in your everyday life. Prime numbers, anyone? Prime numbers. On the flip side, if they're talking about something like a process, they usually speak in very abstract terms which are then very hard to put into practice. In fact, e even right now, I wouldn't say that I am capable exactly to put them into practice in a meaningful way all the time. But I'm listening and I'm trying and I want to show my attempts based on my vague understanding, which is then, of course, based on the various abstract notions of random people trying to explain it. I could have obviously just done all of this off screen and just presented it, but I don't feel like that would have been a very accurate representation, and I wouldn't have had the chance to necessarily interject immediately with my thoughts whenever they arise about various subjects. It may have been more structured, that is certainly a possibility, but not necessarily more useful or interesting at the very least. I've also mentioned this, but I saw someone literally just code using TDD for like 200 episodes. I think it's called Let's Play TDD. It's a discontinued series. It never actually reached conclusion and didn't get that far either. But I really liked it and it gave me a lot of perspective because someone was writing an application that they sort of intended to use, though they obviously never probably got to actually using it because they never finished it. Still, it felt more interesting than just listening to another schmuck preaching to you the lines written in the Scrum Bible, whatever the equivalent would be. He, he didn't actually go into the process or anything, at least not in a way that I have gone into. The point really is, I'm doing this live because I think that it would be more interesting to see it, at least somewhat live. But I will probably try to keep these uh, videos shorter and do more cuts around typing and shit, because I do want this to pick up the pace, obviously. It's, it's just it's just too fucking slow. We're <laughs> Every single video just keeps adding 10 more minutes to the last video. It, it, it can't continue. It's unsustainable. Not only for my sanity and energy, but also nobody's just going to want to watch this shit. <laughs> if it's hour long every single time. So there you have it. Uh, next video we should get started at least on some coding. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.